we're going to get into the calculation uh, and the way we measure the price elasticity of demand. This is really simple math. Don't get uptight about it. The price elasticity of demand refers to the measurement between two prices or two points on the demand curve and how sensitive the quantity demanded is to that change in price. And so we measure that in percentage terms. We measure it as the percentage change in the quantity people purchase divided by or in ratio to the percentage change in the price. And percentage change, uh, we have to make a little modification here, but it's conceptually it's really very easy. Bear with me for a minute. Here's our demand curve. We're looking at a price of $10 at which people buy 16 units or a price of $8 at which people buy 24 units. We want to measure the percentage change in the quantity. After that, we'll measure the percentage change in the price. Now, percentage change, we used to be told in, in I guess, middle school, that when you went from 16 to 24, what kind of percentage change was that? So that was a change of 8, and you started at 16. So that would have been a 50% change in quantity. Sound familiar, right? What if you went in reverse? What if you went from 24 units to 16? Then you said, oh, well, that would be a change of 8 units, and I started at 24. That's one-third. That's a 33% change in quantity. What we want to do is have a method that is consistent, whether it's increasing, the quantity is increasing, or decreasing. Now, a lot of textbooks call this the midpoint formula. It's really easy. What we're going to say is the change is 8. And we're going to divide that by the average of these two quantities, the midpoint between the two quantities. Conceptually, or even quickly here, 16 to 24 is 8 units difference. Halfway there is 4 units. So 16 plus 4 would be 20. Or 24 minus 4 would be 20. And so I'm going to write it this way. The percentage change in quantity is the change in quantity over the average quantity. It's the change over the average. Let's put it up here. It's the percent, I'm sorry, it's the change in quantity over the average quantity. And we're going to do the same thing for price. It's the change in price over the average price. Let's look at that over here for price for just a second. The change is 2, and where's the average? At 9. Not 2 over 10, not 2 over 8, 2 over the average. The change over the average, 2 over 9. So what we're going to get here then, for the uh, quantity element, we're going to get 8 divided by 20. And then for the, the denominator here, we're going to get 2 divided by 9. And that's going to be our calculation for the price elasticity. Doing that very quickly, the old school way, 8 over 20 times 9 over 2. That would be 72 over 40. Oh, goodness. I get uh, 1.8. All right? The math is, is really simple. A few repetitions, you got it down. One thing to notice here. When the price fell from 10 to 8, so that we had a negative price change, the quantity increased. That's the law of demand. Lower prices, greater quantities. So if you have a negative price change, it decreases, then you have a positive change in quantity. Likewise, if you had a positive change in the price, you'd have a negative change in the quantity. So you're always going to have a negative over a positive or a positive over a negative. So this number. This number is always going to be a negative number when we're talking about the demand curve. There it is. It's a negative 1.8. The price elasticity of demand is always negative. We don't always write that. Sometimes in the literature you'll see the, the price elasticity quoted as a number without a sign in front of it. doesn't mean it's positive. It means that if you're intelligent enough to be reading this literature, you ought to understand that's a negative number. That's important in some of our calculations later. So how do we calculate the price elasticity of demand? We take the measurements for price and quantity over a given range of the demand curve. And we take the 
change in quantity over the average divided by the change in price over the average, calculate it out. You can reduce these to decimals if you like, calculate it out, see what you get. Okay? Now remember this too. If we took two different points on this demand curve, we had 9 here and 20, and we had 7 here and, I don't know, 28, we wouldn't get the same number. The price elasticity of demand changes as you go up and down the demand curve. All right? It's not constant. The slope of this line, it's a straight line. The slope is constant. But the price elasticity of demand changes. More about that as we go along. All right? Get it straight on the calculations.